introduced it. These problems concern to find this, the answer to these questions. If you have different points on a plane, what is the shortest path that connects all of them? You can think of each point as a city and the path can be a motorway. That's why we call it the motorway problem. I'm not going to explain this in detail right now. You will see it in the activity paper, how to proceed. Essentially, you will create, you will have two plates parallel to each other. You will put some pins, one for each point, for each city. You will dip this in a soapy solution and the soap film will find the best configuration that connects all the pin. This is a really complex mathematical problem, but with soap bubbles, you can solve it really easily. So if you want to try this activity, you can stop here. If you want to continue, stay tuned, because now we are moving to other surfaces. We all know soap bubbles. Soap bubbles are spherical, but why? In principle, if we take some air, it can have any possible shape. We can have soap bubbles, you can see the image here, we can have soap bubbles of any, any shape you can imagine. However, this is not happening. Well, right now you know enough to imagine that this has to do with the area, with the energy of the soap film itself. Indeed, what happens is that for a fixed volume, the two-dimensional surface that minimizes the area is a sphere. So this is not a big surprise. It's quite difficult to demonstrate it mathematically. I'm sure that you will be able to do it once you learn a little bit of calculus. But for now, you can just get it from the intuition of soap bubbles. We blow in a given amount of air. In order to enclose it, we have to find the shape that minimizes the area. And this is a sphere. Now, a sphere will form because we don't have any other constraint. But we can try to create bubbles that are different from a sphere. Let's see here, for example, I have a kid's pool and a hula hoop. So essentially, I have two rings. Can you imagine what is the shape of the film that will be formed once I pull the hula hoop here? Here we have a kiddie pool with some uh, soapy solution inside and a hula hoop. So we have essentially two rings. We want to know what happens when I dip the hula hoop in the soapy solution and then I pull it up. Before I pull up the ring, stop the video and discuss in the classroom what shape you expect. Okay. Here it is. It's not a cylinder, it's a catenoid. It's bent in the center. Et voilà! Here we are. This surface is called a catenoid. A catenoid is the surface that you obtain when you revolve a line that's called the catenary. Well, this is a catenary. It's the shape taken by a chain when it's free to hang out, and all the forces are uniformly distributed. A catenary is very common in nature. You can see, for example, here, this image of this nice mammal called the sloth that is hanging from a branch, and its spine actually makes a catenary. Catenary is also used in architecture. This is because, again, it minimizes the energy. It's very stable. Inverted catenoid, inverted catenary make very nice arches. And here you have, for example, the gateway arch in St. Louis. Maybe you were surprised to see that when I pulled the hula hoop, we obtained something that was different from a cylinder. I was expecting a cylinder myself. We can explain this a little bit intuitively. Let's give a look at this glass. This is a cylinder. If I want to cover it with stripes of paper, 
I have to take stripes that all have the same length. So here is one. Here the second one. And so on. Here I have stripes all of the same length. However, a catenoid is thinner in the center. So if I want to cover a catenoid with stripes of paper, I will start from stripes of the same length here, but then I will need stripes that are shorter and shorter. This explains a little bit why when we have two rings, the surface in between is not a cylinder, but it is a catenoid. The catenoid has a lower surface area. Again, you can make a precise mathematical demonstration, but to do that you need a little bit more math. So maybe you have to wait a few years. Now we know almost everything about the shape of soap bubbles. And we know that soap bubbles are actually useful to study surfaces with a minimum area. And in principle, they're good physical models to try to create communication system. I hope you tried the motorway problem. However, so bubbles are useful also in different contexts. For example, in architecture. You can see one example here. Here we have a frame that has a spiral shape. And once we dip it in a soapy solution, the soap film takes a very characteristic shape, a surface whose name is helicoid. The helicoid has been used for centuries in architecture to create winding stairs. And here we have an example. This is the stair located at the Vatican. There is a famous German architect named Frei Otto who create really beautiful and daring structures with soap bubbles. You can see here an example. This is the roof of the Olympic Stadium in Munich, in Germany. And here there is another building by the same architect. And you can have an idea of how he used the soap bubbles to create it. On the top left of the image, there is a soap model. Here we have the wires that he actually used to create the model. He then dipped the model in a soapy solution, took it out and saw how the soap film would configurate, how, what shape would the soap film take. This was tested because, of course, it has to be stable to, to not to break when there is wind, when there are all kinds of perturbations. And then the architect was projecting this model, making a real design. And here on the top right, there is the network of the building. Here it is. And at the end, we have the final building. Soap films minimize the energy, we already know this, and so it's really convenient to try to create some buildings that mimic them, that are following the same shape. Finally, soap bubbles have been used in biology as a good model for membranes and for the partition of cells. On the left here, you have an image of the wings of a dragonfly, and on the right, there is a model of these wings. This model was created using just a frame and so bubbles. And you can see that it mimics pretty well the wings of the dragonfly itself. And we will finish with frog eggs. Frog eggs form in a solution which is clearly different from a soap solution or from water. However, the shape is really similar to that soap taken by a soap foam or by the water bubbles. In this image, on the top, you can see frog eggs. Here on the left, there is a soap foam. And on the right, there is an image from the video that was taken at the International Space Station, when the astronaut was actually putting Alka-Seltzer inside the film of water, and this was creating bubbles. These bubbles will compete and will divide 
and interact all in the same way. That's it for today. There are many more applications of soap bubbles in physics of turbulence, in astrophysics, in chemistry, in material science. And I hope that you will continue to explore the world of soap bubble because there is a lot of fun. We just barely touched the surface. In the next module, we will discover where the colors of soap bubbles come from. Hello, teacher. So this model is designed to explore the science of soap bubbles. We first start with the concept of surface tension. Um, if you want to talk a little bit more about it, you can maybe expand talking about intramolecular forces. In the next segment, we make a connection between the energy and the area of the soap film. And this gives the possibility to talk more about mechanical work and energy. And it gives the possibility to understand something about the geometry of soap bubbles without entering into too many uh, mathematical details. Finally, we are just studying some applications of soap bubbles, mainly in architecture and in biology. Once you make your soap solution, you can uh, try to actually change the proportion from the basic recipe that's written in the teacher guide. This is because the proportions change depending on the weather, depending on the water, depending on the soap itself that you're using. So you should really try to experiment. It can be a little bit frustrating because every time that we try to make a demonstration, we had to repeat it many times. But once it works, it's really rewarding. So I suggest to be patient and try to do it until it works. Um, to make uh, the frames, I was using a copper ring. You can use any metal, any, any wire that you can deform. And you can also try to create different frames. There are some examples on the book by Charles Boyce that's listed in the references. And finally, now Walter and I will show you how to make a catenite in your classroom. You can see it in detail. Have fun. Goodbye. So now Walter and I are going to show you how to make your own catenite without needing a kiddie pool and a hula hoop, but just with two circular frames. All right, so, if you're ready, I'm ready. Okay. Yes, yeah, you can take a needle and then here I'm dipping the frames in a soapy solution. And bring it to the camera here. Now I pull the two rings apart and you will want to pop the circle in the middle. Just, just trying to hold it. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. There it is. Yeah, you got it. You have the, yeah. You can see now that in between the two rings. Very nice. There is a surface. That's the catenoid. And it's completely open here. Yes. It completely goes through here and I popped them. No, oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, me and Corey moved in.